So we're going to look at an example. And this says using Appendix D, calculate the molar solubility of silver bromide in pure water, a 3.0 times 10 to the negative second molar silver nitrate solution, and a 0 0.50 molar sodium bromide solution. So if we start with A, um, you always want to write your KSP expression. So we know that silver bromide is a solid, right? it's only slightly soluble, so it's at equilibrium with its ions, Ag plus Br minus. Looking at appendix D in the back, we find the KSP is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 13. And next to this, I'm just going to write the overall expression. So KSP is equal to the concentration of Ag plus times the concentration of Br minus. So this is our KSP. It wants us to find the molar solubility of AgBr. So if we think about the last row of our ice table at equilibrium, we have X um, moles per liter of silver bromide, which means based on coefficients, we have X Ag plus and X Br minus. So if we think about our um, KSP over here, we know that we plug in Ag plus and we plug in Br minus. So if we do that, we have 5 times 10 to the negative 13 equals x times x, which is x squared. If you take the square root, you find that x equals 7.1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. Well, AgBr is equal to x, so this is our answer. Now this is in pure water, which means if you just put solid silver bromide into a beaker of pure water, this is what the concentration would be. Now this is just a number right now, probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but as we go through B and C, we'll be able to compare so that you can check and see. So if we look at part B, what this is saying is we're putting silver bromide into a 0 .030 molar silver nitrate solution. So at equilibrium, we have X moles per liter of silver bromide, but from the silver nitrate solution, silver nitrate is a completely soluble salt. So in the solution, we would have Ag plus plus NO3 minus. Notice this is a common ion. So that means that we would have 0 0.030, which is 3.0 times 10 to the negative second, plus X, and then just X for Br minus. So again, we have this point zero three zero. This is a common ion, kind of like we did the common ion effect before. Um, now this is just with molar solubility instead. So because it's in a point zero three zero molar silver nitrate solution, we already have those silver plus ions that we have to take into account. So when we look at our KSP, times 10 to the negative 13 equals point zero three zero plus X times X. Well, if we make a note down here, assume x is much less than 0 0.030, we can ignore that one. So we get 5 times 10 to the negative 13 equals 0 0.030x. You divide out, and you find that x equals 1.7 times 10 to the negative 11 molar. Again, double check back. Silver bromide here is equal to X. This is our answer. Now we can compare A to B. When we didn't have any common ions, um, our molar solubility was 7.1 times 10 to the negative 7th. When we add a common ion like silver plus, our solubility goes down. So at equilibrium, we cannot put as many moles into one liter of solution. So now with part C, we want to calculate the molar solubility of silver bromide in a 0 0.50 molar solution of sodium bromide. So like before, this is the last row of our ice table. So at equilibrium, we have X moles per liter of silver bromide. We have X moles per liter of silver plus ions, but now we're in a sodium bromide solution and NaBr I'll write it over here. NaBr completely dissociates into Na plus and Br minus ions. So that means that we have 0 0.50 plus x. And like before, if we assume that x is much less than 0 0.5, 
we can say that 5 times 10 to the negative 13 equals 0 0.50x. And then if we solve for x, we find it's 1.0 times 10 to the negative 12th molar. And again, like before, double check, silver bromide is equal to x. That's my answer. Okay, so notice as we go um, through these problems, notice the decreased solubility of the silver bromide. We cannot put as many moles per liter of solution in um, with these common ions. So again, the decreased solubility with the common ion. So we're going to take a look at calculating solubility at different pHs. So something to make note of as we go through these examples is the OH minus concentration is set by the pH. So OH minus is set by the pOH. Well, I guess it's set by the pH, um, but technically by the pOH, but you can calculate one or the other. So OH minus is set by the pOH. So if you're giving pH, um, do your calculation, you know, 14 minus pH gives you pOH. Um, so for letter A, we have pH is 7. So if the pH is 7, pOH is 7, and the OH minus concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. Okay, so think about how you'd go through that. You have the pH, you can find the pOH. If you have the pOH, take the anti-log. 10 to the negative pOH to get you OH minus concentration. So now we're going to take a look at the KSP. So we have MnOH2, okay, which is a solid. That would be at equilibrium with manganese 2 plus ions and OH minus ions. Balance the equation. So two OH minus ions. And now we're just going to look at your equilibrium row. So you have X uh, manganese hydroxide solid, you have X manganese 2 plus ions, and then you have 1 times 10 to the negative 7th hydroxide ions. And so what we can do is we can just plug this into our KSP. So we have X times 1 times 10 to the negative 7th squared. Okay, so don't forget to square that because OH minus ions, you have twice as many. When you plug all of this into your calculator, you know that KSP from looking in appendix D, KSP is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 13. So again, that's appendix D. You plug all of this in, you find that X is equal to 16 molar. So if you take a look at up here at your your equation, ma uh, manganese hydroxide solid is equal to x. This is equal to x. That's going to be your answer. So um, at a pH of 7, you can dissolve 16 moles of manganese hydroxide per liter of solution. So for part B, um, we have a pH of 9.5. And so from that, we can find our pOH, which is equal to 4.5, which means our OH minus concentration is 3.16 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. And just like before, we can set up our equation, manganese hydroxide solid is at equilib equilibrium with manganese two plus ions and two OH minus ions. So we can use you know, the same KSP from appendix D, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 13. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 13 equals, well, if we think about this is X, X, and then our OH minus is 3.16 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, so we have X times 3.16 times 10 to the negative fifth squared. Now your KSP is equal to the concentration of manganese 2 plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions squared. So you solve for this, you find that X equals 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Again, because manganese hydroxide solid is equal to X, that's going to be our answer.
So the last example we have a pH of 11.8. So if pH is 11.8, we can find our pOH, which is 2.2. Our OH minus concentration is going to then be 6.31 times 10 to the negative third molar. Okay, again, like before, we have our manganese hydroxide equilibrium. So Mn2 plus plus 2 OH minus. Okay, your KSP again is Mn2 plus concentration times OH minus concentration squared. You're still using the same KSP. Okay, KSP is independent of any changes. KSP is a constant. It's always going to be the same um, at certain temperatures. So we're assuming this is all at the same temperature. So we have 1.6 times 10 to the negative 13th equals x, okay, because that's what your, your Mn2 plus is x, okay, just the same as your manganese hydroxide. So you have x times 6.31 times 10 to the negative third squared. And then when you solve that, you find that x equals 4.0 times 10 to the negative ninth molar. Okay, so take a look at these values. Okay, think first, what is happening as your pH goes from 7 to 11.8? Okay, pH is increasing. So pH is increasing, remember they're, they're inverse. If pH increases, solubility decreases. That is why from A to B to C, our solubility is going down. Right, the amount of moles that you can dissolve per liter is decreasing. This is also an example of the common ion effect. Right? We're adding the hydroxide ions. So every time we increase the hydroxide ions from A to B to C, that decreases the solubility. So for example four, it wants to know which of the following salts will be substantially more soluble in acidic solution than in pure water. And you have five different salts. So in order to do these problems, what you need to look at is the anion of the salt. So if the anion of the salt is the conjugate base of a weak acid, it will combine with hydrogen ions, which would reduce the concentration of the anion, and it would make the salt more soluble. So for example, if we look at A, if we look at zinc carbonate, if we would write the equilibrium expression, okay, or the equilibrium equation, zinc carbonate, would be at equilibrium with zinc ions and carbonate ions. Well, if we take a look at the anion in the negative, if we would have CO3 2 minus, okay, that would be the one that would react with H plus. Okay, and if that reacted with H plus, we would get H2CO3. Okay, now think, is H2CO3 a strong or a weak acid? Well, this is a weak acid. So that means that the conjugate base, that means that the CO3 2 minus is the conjugate base of a weak acid. This is a basic anion. So what that means is this reaction would take place. That reaction would take place decreasing the carbonate ion. So in order to counteract that, we would have to dissolve more zinc carbonate. So um, Le Chatelier's principle says that in order to counteract the decrease of carbonate ions by reacting with H, we would have to increase the amount of zinc carbonate that would dissolve in order to make up for that loss. Okay, so this is kind of what you do as you go through each of these salts. So if you would look at B, okay, you want to look at the anion. So the anion of zinc sulfide is S2 minus. Well, if S2 minus combined with hydrogen, you would get H2S. That is a weak acid, so ZNS would be more soluble in acid than in water. Okay, so B would be yes. Um, C, you have Bi I3. Well, your anion is I minus, which would form HI. HI is a strong acid. Well, if you have a strong acid, what does that mean? Well, that means that it dissociates completely, and that means that your anion is neutral. Your anion will not react. So BII3 would not 
be more acidic or would not be more soluble, excuse me, in acidic solution. Okay, so BII3 would not be more soluble in an acid because its anion is neutral. So it would not, I minus would not react to form HI because HI is already a strong acid, it would dissociate completely. If you look at D, AGCN, your anion is CN minus, that would form HCN. Okay, um, this is a weak acid, so it would be more soluble. And then in E, a PO4-3 minus would react to form H3PO4. That is a weak acid, so that would be more soluble. So to answer the question, which of the following salts will be substantially more soluble in acidic solution than in pure water? It would be zinc carbonate, zinc sulfide, silver cyanide, and barium phosphate.